Hey everybody and welcome to Mondays with Mike. I am Mike, it's Monday, and today's topic is hail. And so I wanted to, I have a cheesy title for this. What the hail? What the hail happened on Friday and then a little bit more Saturday and Sunday, but mostly on Friday. Uh, first thing I want to say is I'm really, really glad that we had the technology and the meteorology to be able to let you know that there was a high chance for hail on Friday, right? You, I mean, you remember that we had our Fox 26 storm alert days. Fox 26 storm alert day, by the way, we will put it, you'll see it, us put it on our forecast graphics. And that's to let you know that we expect uh, weather impacts for you. Now, during the wintertime, it might be snow or ice. Not that often snow, but it might be ice. During the spring and summertime, it might be severe thunderstorms, it might be high winds, really anything that's going to have a significant impact on your life, your day, your safety, we're going to put that uh, Fox 26 storm alert day. In this case, it was days because we had Friday, Saturday, Sunday. So on Friday, things went downhill quickly. So we had some morning thunderstorms and then it cleared out. And uh, I remember thinking and saying, you know, on uh, Friday, well, gosh, we're going to get really warm today. And the hotter we get, we were talking about it on Fox 26 News at noon. As we get hotter and hotter, that's even more energy for the atmosphere to work with. This was last Friday. So I want to talk a little bit, well, not a little bit, a lot <laughs> about hail. And to answer a very simple question, which is, and I've seen it uh, posed uh, online on our uh, Instagram account, which is, how do we get hail when it's hot outside? I thought ice formed when it was cold outside, right? Well, let's start out. I want to share with you some video right here. We got some really crazy video from the rodeo uh, as folks scrambled for cover on Friday afternoon. You know, these storms rolled through during the mid to late part of the afternoon. I did, I wasn't there, and so I was curious to ask, um, did the rodeo folks give everybody a heads up? And apparently they did. You know, they closed down the rides and they tried to encourage everybody to seek shelter. But, you know, folks uh, might not have cell phone service or maybe they didn't hear the announcement, whatever it was. And so they were still stuck out there in it with the combination of heavy rain. And as you can see here, we got the heavy rain, the high winds and even some hail coming down. Uh, we saw some pictures on social media, too, of hail that was approximately egg sized. Um, maybe, you know, the equivalent of a racquetball or something like that, you know, a small orange or small apple. That is severe hail. So severe hail is defined as anything one inch in diameter or larger. And it's called severe hail because that's approximately the size that'll cause some damage. So if you get penny size hail coming down, it may be a little bit scary. It may be interesting to hear it tapping on the window or maybe even tapping on the roof or hitting your car, but typically that size hail doesn't really cause damage. Once you get up to about an inch though, it can, you know, really ping your car up and, you know, end up with a lot of problems. On my Facebook page, if you go to my Facebook page at Fox 26 uh, Mike, just type in Fox 26 Mike, um, I provided a link in there for you for if you think that you may have had hail damage, make sure you write down exactly when you think it happened. So, you know, Friday was uh, the, um, uh, what, 15th, right? And uh, so that was a day that we expected to see severe weather. It was a day that you can look it up on that link uh, that I uh, shared with you that is um, uh, the Storm Prediction Center, which sort of documents the severe weather reports that came in. So that's something to keep. Now, also, Keep this in mind, and I swear it happens all the time, everybody. I've been in this business a long time. I've gotten a lot of phone calls from frustrated viewers who have said um, that their roof is leaking, right? And they say, I know we had a hailstorm back somewhere. I don't remember when. Maybe it was April. Maybe it was January. I don't remember. Can you help? And I always do my best to help. But so what I decided to do this time is I'm going to put that information just right there on my Facebook page because you may not notice that you have damage to your house yet, but the roof might start leaking three months from now. And you'll say, gosh, when was that hailstorm? And you'll be able to go back and tell the insurance adjuster when it happened, right? 
So let's talk about, and I'll have some graphics uh, to show you here, I believe, coming up here if I have time in a few minutes. But I brought my favorite thing, which is my whiteboard, right? You know how much I love this, my dry erase. And so what I wanted to do was talk about this idea, this concept of how in the world, how do we get hail balls of ice coming from the sky. How do we get that when it's hot outside? I saw that question posted and really it's a very, very common question. And it's actually a really good question, isn't it? So let's talk about that real quick. It all has to do with instability, with energy, and the fact that the atmosphere gets colder the farther up you go. So let me make sure that I'm drawing where everybody can see it. So here's the ground. Okay. So here's a uh, building, here's a tree. We're gonna record something here in a minute too. So guys, just tell me to stop when you need me to stop. <laughs> so there's a building, there's a tree, here's a house. You can tell my art skills, you know, not too terrific. So let's say that the clouds are up here, or let's say that we have a cloud base uh, right here, okay? So down here, it could be 80 degrees. And I'll put an F for Fahrenheit, because, you know, in weather, in science, we use Celsius scale. But let's just say it's about 80 degrees. Now, as you go up in the atmosphere, the temperature drops approximately 10 degrees Celsius for every kilometer that you're up. So as you get up to, uh, in the case of Friday, the freezing layer began at about 12,000 feet-ish. So let's say you go up here, which... Well, let's just say the cloud is, is probably a couple thousand feet above the ground. But as you go up here, you know, it might go down to uh, 40 degrees, and then 20 degrees, and then zero degrees. Um, and this is all Fahrenheit. All right. So as you go up, the air gets colder and colder. So that's one way to visualize, okay, well, that's how ice can form. But how in the world does it fall? if it's so warm outside. Well, here's the situation. So let me redraw, I'm gonna redraw this uh, cloud for you. And just sort of give you an idea of what happened on Friday. So you end up with this hot air and it rises up like this, okay? And so you form this big storm cloud, right? Cumulonimbus cloud. Now coming down here, you have rain and you'll also have this uh, downdraft, down okay? But this is the updraft. And that's really warm air, right? But here's what happens. This is where it gets really interesting, is that you have what is called potential energy. And you may remember, you gotta go back to like middle school, high school, uh, earth science or physics or whatever because potential energy is the energy that happens, well, it's one of the ways it happens, is if you lift something up. So like right now, the marker has this much energy, it's not moving, but if I move it up here, I've done work and I've added potential energy to it. So if I drop it, it accelerates. Well, in the case of the atmosphere, the potential energy is uh, developed from if you have hot air here, and then it gets colder faster. So if you say much colder, so that's potential energy. We call that CAPE, CAPE, which stands for, now use this at a party to impress people, okay? It stands for convective Available potential energy, CAPE. So convective means rising air. Available potential energy means how much energy is there available to get this moving, okay? So when you have very high CAPE, you can have very fast moving updrafts. You can think of it like as buoyancy. So if you've gone swimming and you have a beach ball, okay? Have you ever tried to push the beach ball down into the water, you can't do it because it's buoyant, it wants to float. Well, that's the, so your, your, 
giving it a lot of potential energy when you're pushing it down, and then when you let go, it pops back up. So that's exactly what happens with the air, where um, once it starts to heat up, it can rise through and pick up speed. Now, the faster, this is fast, this air is moving fast. The faster you can get the updraft moving, it starts to form little ice crystals here. Small, microscopic, okay? Really, really small ice crystals. Let me get rid of all this because it's distracting, all right? So you get tiny little ice crystals forming. Well, how in the world does that become big giant hail, scary hail that causes damage? Well, you have this strong air moving upward. So let's say you get a little tiny dot of ice that forms. You have a lot of water here in the cloud, and the water is actually below freezing. Now, I know a lot of folks think that, well, it's natural. You say, well, water freezes at 32 degrees, right? It does, but it can also exist below 32 degrees. And that's something that's an odd thing to think about. It's called super cooled water droplets. Because water, I'm gonna put, because it's a really cool word, okay? Super cooled H2O. So what that means is that you have this, because ice needs something to freeze to, um, unless it's extremely cold. But if you get down to 31 degrees or 30 degrees or 29, it doesn't just automatically freeze. It likes something to freeze onto, especially if it's a crystal, like an ice crystal. So if there's an ice crystal, it'll start freezing to the outside of it. So this little ball forms. And then you have this strong updraft coming up that lifts this thing up in the air. Now the super cooled water starts to freeze on contact with that little stone, little pebble of ice. And as it goes up and down, it goes up, it goes down, it goes back up, it goes back down, it kind of does like a, you know, that kind of thing. And as it does, it gets bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger because every time it passes through this layer, the super cooled water freezes to it. It coats the outside of it. And in fact, it does something to the radar too. It'll really mess with the radar where when you get this layer of the super cooled water on the outside of it, it's, it gives like a um, super reflectivity back to the radar and it can result in things uh, called um, a hail spike. Like there's certain effects that it does to the radar that will give you hints that there's large hail or wet hail uh, in the storm. So when this gets big enough, well, one of two things happens. Either this gets big enough and heavy enough that this wind can't hold it up anymore, okay, and then it falls, or this wind gets weaker and then this falls, or it might be both. So then as a result, after this updraft weakens, so this goes away, and now all of a sudden here's this hail, you know, what the hail, right? All this hail starts to fall. It's still 80 degrees. The rain and hail starts to fall. You get high winds, by the way, you get whoosh, whoosh from this downdraft. And then you get, it'll go from hot to probably 15 degrees colder, 20 degrees colder, and with balls of ice falling out of the sky, even though it was very, very warm. So 80 degrees, now let's say it drops to, I don't know, 65 or something like that, and it's windy and you have hail coming down. And that's what happened at the rodeo, is that you end up, with a situation going from a hot, humid day to all of a sudden rumbles of thunder. And if you're not checking the radar on something like the Fox 26 weather app, then all of a sudden, what is happening? You get this rush of high winds, which is that cold air actually falling down out of the cloud, followed by rain, and then all of a sudden, tap, 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 what's going on? Hail is coming down. So 
This actually happens during the warm months of the year. We can get hail here in thunderstorms during the winter time. I mean, I've seen it happen, but in general, you're going to get hail during the springtime here when we have air that's cold enough aloft and enough warm air at the surface to cause all that rapid rising. Uh, I'm going to switch camera views now and we're going to take a look at some weather graphics that are a little bit neater than what I drew. All right, so I am now in front of a different camera uh, because I want to share these graphics with you and here we go. So this really is more of the same of what I was talking about, but it's much more artistically depicted <laughs> here than, than what I drew on my whiteboard. But uh, uh, so here's the situation. So this would take us back to Friday afternoon, two or so in the afternoon, maybe three, where we had already had a round of some morning rain. Now we're in the process of heating up. We're getting real hot. And so you have this updraft that's forming. The air is rising. And by the way, when the air rises, um, it actually re uh, releases heat, which we call latent heating. Um, it's one of the things that happens in a hurricane, by the way, too. But as a result, as it rises up into the air, it progressively gets more and more buoyant and can rise faster and faster. And so that was the situation that was um, shaping up on Friday and to a certain extent um, over the weekend on Saturday and Sunday, but mostly on Friday. So the updraft goes up and the water starts to condense. And as it rises high enough, some of the water, some of the water vapor will condense as ice crystals or as small pellets of ice. And once that happens, you get into that environment where you have what I was mentioning, which is called the supercooled water, where you have water that's existing up there in a liquid state. So it's not frozen, but it's below 32 degrees. And a lot of folks, you know, don't maybe know that that's possible, but it does happen when the water doesn't have anything to condense onto. So once you have that hailstone there, it sort of attaches to the hailstone, kind of like when we have freezing rain, you know, where it'll coat the trees and power lines and cars and stuff in ice. Uh, you know, we had that in, in uh, December. Um, similar kind of situation, not exactly the same, but similar. So as long as you have a strong enough updraft here, it's going to continue to allow those hailstones to kind of bounce up and down. And every time it bounces up and down, it passes through that super cooled water, it gets coated in another layer of ice. Um, eventually, one of two things happens, either the hailstone gets too big and too heavy, or the updraft weakens, and then it starts to fall out of the sky. And by the way, it also drags the air down with it. It literally drags. So there are a couple things that happen to create this downdraft. One of them is that the motion of the rain and the hail literally gives momentum to the air and, and causes a downward motion. The other thing is the air um, gets colder, and so the air will you know, come down out of the cloud as it has higher density. So that's why you get generally, um, it'll be hot and then you'll feel a, a breeze or like a really strong wind gust come through. The temperature drops 10, 15 degrees. Then you hear the rumbles of thunder and then it starts raining. And then all of a sudden, oh my gosh, there's hail coming down. So you went from like 85 degrees to all of a sudden ice and then it moved on out and then it was pretty nice again, or at least decent weather again. Um, as far as hail sizes, uh, we did have some reports of golf ball hail. So that was in a couple of areas um, down in Brazoria County around Angleton, a couple of reports of 1.8 uh, diameter hail, 1.8 inch diameter. So actually a little bit bigger than a golf ball. We also had what was described as egg sized hail, which is probably about two inch hail or so that hit in Belleville in Austin County. So when we have hail, most of the time it's small and doesn't cause any damage. So that's the pea sized, the dime or penny sized and the nickel size hail. And that will be concerning and a little bit scary sometimes, but it won't usually break windows. It won't usually damage cars and things like that, um, unless it's accompanied by really high winds. Now, once you get to one inch hail or quarter size hail, that's when it can start doing damage. And then obviously the larger the hailstones are, the more damage they could um, do because they have more energy because they're more massive and they're moving very fast. And it's like, you know, pelting your car with, or your roof with um, 
a bunch of baseballs. So what I'll say here is um, if you suspect that there was hail at your house, just go ahead and write it down somewhere because what could happen is that in three months you might have a leak, a leaky roof and you'll think to yourself, well, gosh, I remember when the rodeo was here, we had all that hail. And sure enough, um, you're going to be wondering, well, what day was that? <laughs> you know, what, gosh, when was that? What time was it? When I called the insurance company, they're going to ask me for some of those details. So if you go to my Facebook page, just go to Facebook and search Fox 26 Mike. I'll pin to the top. I haven't pinned it, but I'll pin it to the top uh, of a link to where you can save the um, damage reports from that day, from Friday. So that way you'll have it. Um, obviously, you know if your car got damaged, if the windows are broken. I mean, that's obvious immediate damage, but you might not know if your roof was damaged until weeks or months from now. So go ahead and just keep that information. You'll thank me. <laughs> so anyway, thanks so much for joining me for Mondays with Mike. Um, shout out to my mom and Neil watching in Florida. I'll see you guys in about four weeks. And thank you, everybody else, for tuning in. If you haven't downloaded the Fox Local app on your smart TV, go ahead and do so. Head to the App Store, your favorite platform, whether it's Roku or Amazon or whatever else you have. Search Fox Local so that you can stream us for free. No sign-up, no passwords or anything like that. All right, have a great day, everybody. See ya.